Hi there, friend. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be with you today. It's a beautiful day today here in Central Florida. I hope it is wherever you are. And I hope you're enjoying the blessing of the Lord on your life because that can happen no matter what's going on, you know, politically or in a nation or anything like that. It's wonderful to belong to His kingdom, right? I think you're going to enjoy the program today. Uh, one of the great things about being in the ministry is to meet people with all different kinds of ministries. And I'm going to talk to Jonathan and Christy Sawyer today. They uh, are leaving this part of Florida to become a music pastor and a teacher, Bible teacher for the number one church of God in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee. And they're excited about that, and we're sad to see them go, but we are happy for them. They are leaving the First Assembly of God Church in Fort Myers and uh, been there with Pastor Dan Betzer. So wonderful, wonderful people uh, that are represented here today. And so we're going to talk to them about their ministry and the new one coming up. And I'm going to join Stephanie because I think... Apple pie is just a signature dish of America, for sure. Well, we're making a quasi version of that. Actually, it's a apple pie filling coffee cake, but you, you get the connection, I'm sure. So I'll fix that with Stephanie and would like to remind you, we are viewer supported. Thank you so much for every dollar you send to this program. I, I wish I had the ability to convey what, what's really in my heart of thanksgiving to you. And um, as the Lord impresses you, I hope you will obey him. Stephanie and I have both learned to obey the Lord when it comes to giving. And it's a blessing. 1-800-229-0059 if you use your credit card or our address is box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And it's true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me tell you, if he's telling you to do something that makes no sense, do it. Because uh -huh. that's when you, you know it's the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. More than once. I mean, the Lord told me to give a big one one time, and that pastor called me and said, Whoa! Yeah. You know? And uh, you struggle with it a little bit, but... As you mature, oh, well, sometimes you'll you have do it conversations quickly. with the Lord. Like, are you sure? Yeah, yeah. You want to rethink that one? <laughs> okay, so you're gonna spray the pan for me. Mm -hmm. I have a cake mix. I have a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I have a cup of sour cream, three eggs, a quarter cup of water, and then you have a cup of confectionery sugar and some milk. Yeah, I'm for gonna, the icing. Yes, I'm gonna mix all of my five ingredients together, and you're gonna make an icing for the. It looks delicious. It's so easy. I believe on a show earlier this week, you and I were talking about the difference. And certainly I grew up in the era where everything was made from scratch. Sure. And that's gradually changed. And boy, some of it is really good. Yes. I love making stuff at home. I like to not always buy store bought treats and everything, but I want it to be easy. So this is in that category. Easy but delicious. And you better believe I'm taking my husband home some of this because apple pie is, is his, that his very thing? favorite. Do you yes. ever make apple pie? I have in the past. I haven't in a while. I need to. Here's the problem. When I have things like that at home, then I eat it too. That is a problem. That is a problem. When you have absolutely no discipline. No self-control whatsoever. But I'm working on it. Boy, I'm already done with mine. Well, look at you. I'm getting there. And you sprayed the pan. Wow, you are you just stand there and look pretty for I'm a second, so on the would ball. you? Yes, you are. I'm going to mix these I'm five ingredients. To... You did a great job. Yeah, look at Very that. Very nice. What is amazing when you make a glaze and it's confectioner's sugar and a little cream or milk, the difference, the disparity. Yes. Uh, I thought that will never take... You know, you're going to need a whole lot more milk, yeah, but you don't. Yeah, no, because powdered sugar it. really uh, is easy to work with. So, And we also have a can of apple pie filling. After I put this into the pan, we're just going to dollop some apple pie filling on it. And then you bake it. Yeah, and the, most of the time the uh, cake part comes up over the... Right. You bake so. it at 350 for 35 degrees, and then you let it cool a little bit. This is beautiful. Look at this, how lovely. And I'll give you that and I will. I'm just trying not to make a huge mess here. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
make a mess over that. I'm gonna get the pan. Look how, how lovely. Would, yeah, that how is. would you do yeah, this? Yeah, just make it pretty. Okay. Yeah. I would probably eat it without it, but this is what the that recipe. That makes no could. sense whatsoever. I'm Calls just saying. For. <laughs> makes no sense, Miss Rippy. I okay. tell you, there are, you know, when you're my age, you realize Look how beautiful. the changes. Um, the changes. I, I think you and I have, have we ever really made a pie crust here? We always buy it. Yeah, well, I've made a pie crust at home, but I haven't made one here. I think, didn't Sharon Bailey make one on this? Oh, Sharon Bailey. She makes the She best should open a pie, pie shop. I'm okay. Take and a then quick gonna, bite of this. Yes, I'm going to take apple pie filling and dollop it on, mm -hmm. okay? And then it bakes up over it. It's I just want to see how much this tastes like an apple pie. Nothing like nothing like uh, real apple pie, you know? No, but that's going to be, I can see, that's going to be so good. Mm -hmm. First, Arthene Rippy said, I, sh I don't know if I'd put the whole can. It looks like too much. What? It's good. And then she's saying she wouldn't put the glaze on. So if you want sense. this recipe, that's very good. I'm surprised. Okay. Um, the information come up on your screen and you choose the way you would like to get it and uh, we'll get it right out to you and if you haven't met the Sawyers you're going to love them and we're sorry they're gone but we're happy for them so listen to what they have to say about ministry and all it's very enlightening so stay right there. If you would like a copy of today's recipe you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, I'm very happy to welcome to Home Keepers what I call a power couple. <laughs> and that's Jonathan and Christy uh, Sawyer. And welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to finally get you here and yeah. now that you're here you're leaving um, I know. <laughs> uh, so we want to talk about your time um, in Fort Myers which was so great such a blessing to the church and to you as well I'm sure yes. yeah. uh, but also a wonderful move to uh, Cleveland Tennessee uh, but let's go back a little bit how'd y'all meet well I was a worship pastor there at a church in uh, in South Carolina in the sh near Charlotte North Carolina and Christy had been there most of her adult life, and uh, we I had noticed her but didn't know her well, and then she was playing Pilot's wife in a Easter drama, <laughs> and we were in rehearsal well, after rehearsal. Well, she was a good woman. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and so rehearsal after rehearsal, and I, I started making sure we were at the same dinners after rehearsal and hanging out, and we started talking on the phone, and one thing led to mm -hmm. another. I pursued and pursued and, and pursued, pursued and pursued. Now, you, you've always been a musician, right? Mm -hmm, my whole life. Uh, because uh, you're leaving behind a wonderful program, which I'm sure you've had a lot of uh, hand in yeah, building at the you. First Assembly of God Church yeah. in Fort Myers. Uh, you have the choir and the orchestra and the worship yes. team and, and all that. Uh, were you raised in a musical family? I was. Uh, my, my mom's musical, my dad's musical, uh, uh, my extended family it's are usually all the way it is. musical. And I just, I started playing the piano when I was about three. And my parents said, he, you know, he's not, this sitting not banging in you. This, this sounds like a song, you know. And <laughs> so next thing, you know, that talent just continued to develop. And it's, and it is God. Of course, I've, I've studied since then, but, but the, the raw talent is just God given, you know. Yeah, I, I understand that. Not that I have it, but I've got two sisters who do. That's, that's right. <laughs> uh, now, Christy, did you always, when you, were you raised in a Christian home? I was. I was. And when did your uh, interest in Bible study and teaching happen? Actually, in college, I took a public speaking class and noticed that there was something different because all of the other people in the class would get really sick and upset about having to get up and do something, but it felt really natural <laughs> to me. And then I did a lot of mission work, and so they used me as the voice with the mission team to go and speak to different churches. So it sort of started then, and then at the church we met in, our pastor was so great to notice something in me and start using me in pastor's conferences and things like that. So one thing just led to another. Uh, this is um, a good typical where the Lord really prepares you yeah. all the way. You're still you're still being prepared yeah, always. Um, you've had a very successful ministry called River Dwellers yes, at the First Assembly of God in Fort Myers, and 
probably be doing something not quite clear yet on what it'll be when you move to uh, Cleveland. Um, there's something about women yes. that love the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And do you have any thoughts on that? I think that women, especially in this culture that we're living in, they are, they want, I think what led me to begin that, what the Holy Spirit wanted me to do with that ministry, is there are so many, not just women, women and men, but in particular women, they are sitting on those pews week after week, and they're not doing anything. They're not connecting with each other. And really, in these times that we're living in, I believe God is rising up an army. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of our responsibility as pastors and leaders is we've got to get them up and out. And that's really what that ministry is all about. And they, and not to mention, not just an emotional, you mm -hmm. can go to a women's conference and get an emotional experience, but it's the Word of God. The, I mean, the Bible says it takes the Word and the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is disciple them week after week to get that Word down in them. And then you mix that with the Spirit and then you've got an army. I know that here in Pinellas County for a couple of decades, there were some real major, major women's Bible classes, and there still are. But I remember that some of them came from this one teacher these other teachers came from this one teacher. Her name was Ruth Muntz. Her mother was uh, a great writer of Christian novels, Grace Livingston Hill. And um, women, maybe we're more personable or maybe we kind of mix better. <laughs> and I have seen a few places, though, where there were great men's Bible classes. And I think that is a need yes and that god would raise those up in the united absolutely. states absolutely yes. amen because men would come absolutely. you know with the right teaching the right uh right teacher yeah that would change the world i believe <laughs> yeah i i think it would too i think yeah. it would so we've got the two of these great ministries married together and uh they overlap in a way because you play for some of her things sometimes, mm -hmm. but still they're completely different. Now, I want to talk to you about the church music today yeah. because you have a choir, orchestra, worship team, and um, I don't know what else you include in that. And a lot of churches don't have that anymore. They, no. just, they just have the worship team. Does the church in Cleveland have a choir? They, you know, the church there... Uh, uh, 50 years ago, T.L. Lowry turned around. He was pastoring there at the time, and uh, and he looked around behind him, and he said, this is just a, we need a real choir. And so he said, meet me at my, if you want to be in a real choir, meet at my house this Saturday night. 200 people showed up T. for L. a Lowry? potluck. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah I and, heard him preach. Yeah, yeah, and so 200 people showed up that night. And, <laughs> oh, no. uh, and that was the that was the birth of the Crusader Choir, and they they have a Danny Murray directed that he was a minister of music. So there you're going to there. a choir? It, well, mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a, it's a rich history, but they've been through some transitions, and, mm -hmm. and the choir has has sort of taken a backseat in some ways. Mm -hmm. And so we we part of our assignment is mm -hmm. is to really bring the choir back to the preeminence in worship and the, and the it's part of the DNA mm -hmm. and so bringing it back as the as mm -hmm. the centerpiece of worship there mm -hmm. which is our heart I, I believe in a choir because it allows so many people to use their gift and be involved in in ministry that may not ever hold a microphone or, or, or sing out front but they can make a contribution and mm -hmm. so and, and you know the Bible says if, if one can put a thousand a flight two can put ten thousand what can a hundred voices together in, in anointed worship do in the spirit realm. Absolutely. You know. <clears throat> I feel the loss of the choirs, uh, is, I've had a lot of experience there, mm -hmm. like you, and you look at Easter time, rehearsal, 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 Christmas, Christmas. Those people are dedicated. Oh. They yes. are there, they are there, and it's to me it's like they've been kicked to the curb. Yeah, yeah, and what a great change, because you, you know this as well as I do. You're not just learning music. No. You're building relationships. Mm -hmm. You're discipling. Mm -hmm. There's so many components yeah. that come in that choir rehearsal, mm -hmm. it's a family, you know, and mm -hmm. so it is, you know, I had somebody say recently, well, that's like a church within a church. I said, that's exactly right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've often thought about that, and um, my own history is in the church from the time I was born, that um, there's not more, any more faithful people in the church. No. Mm -hmm. I, if, you, if you want faithfulness, 
Yeah. That is it. Look right there, and movers and shakers too. Yes. I've always said mm -hmm. for some reason, mm -hmm. if you look in the choir, you're also going to find nursery workers and, and the kind of the backbone of a church. Mm -hmm. They're in there, a They're council, there. church council members, yeah. and, and movers and shakers that really influence a church's yeah. life uh, for sure. Now, Christy, uh, how do you decide what you're going to teach? Because I'm sure you, I'm sure you have a, a series. Maybe do you go like from uh, fall to spring, or whatever? I sometimes do series. Interestingly, it, in the platform of River Dwellers, I have rarely done one. I've really only done one series, and it was on the Book of Romans, which was amazing. But because we have so many people coming in and out, um, they're going in and bringing these new people in all the time. And mm -hmm. so I really have a lot of standalone series. And I just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit usually. Um, but every once in a while, He will give me a series to do, and I will do that. But mostly it's just led by, by Him. I think only eternity will reveal the benefits of those women that come with heartache yes problems yeah. and they get with other women and yeah. we're good at this i don't know <laughs> yeah. about you guys yeah. but i don't think you're nearly as good no. at it no. as we no. are but i mean they bear one another's burdens they really do they find a soft place to land in those well and i think and you have seen this before so often and what the enemy would try to do is tell us we're the only one mm -hmm. that's going through yeah. that thing mm -hmm. it's only you and so when someone shares their testimony and all of a sudden they see they are not mm -hmm. the only one, then all of a sudden they have hope. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're called to do, is to help bring somebody over to the other side by our story. And that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. It's mm -hmm. beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Do you ever consult each other on, uh, do you say, Christy, what do you think of this arrangement or this song? <laughs> <laughs> not nearly enough, but, uh, but, I, but we do talk about it mm -hmm. a lot, yeah. But do you kind of draw from him for your work. That might be easier than music. He, he has me speak at several things. And what I usually follow, I really trust him and how the Holy Spirit leads him in planning. And so really like I'm speaking for him this Friday night at our worship service called Overflow. And all I will ask, all I will do is look at his song set and then I will know what the Lord's been speaking to him and then I'll just pray about that and the Lord inevitably gives me something and then we usually wait and compare afterwards, which is really fun mm -hmm. because we can then see the evidence of the Lord really yeah. kind of working through both of us. You know what I see in these ministries, how God through the Holy Spirit elevates mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. I had a several choirs, but my sanctuary choir, I would let just about anybody in. If yeah. they were really tone deaf, I'd say, just move your lips, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but I remember one guy who, you know, he kind of worked hard on his life, probably felt like a nobody. And uh, he joined the choir and I put him in a group that knew their part and could carry him along. We did a big program at the auditorium, put a tuxedo on him, and I'll never forget how he stood there in awe. Mm. And my daughter, you know, usually when you do Oh Holy Night, it's real, woo, woo, a lot of trumpets and all. I did yeah. it just with a harp that oh, year, just wow. a soft uh, choir with harp. He stood there with that tuxedo on, on the platform after. He says, I never dreamed I'd sing with the harp. Now, and when women come to your Bible studies and they find somebody, that has had the same situation, it changes their world. Yeah. That's what Jesus came to yes. do. Yes. To Absolutely. elevate us in those. Yes. Absolutely. I'm sure you've got a lot of stories like that. Well, we had a funny moment, and I tell this when I teach in choir uh, uh, conferences and clinics, that uh, when we first started dating, Christy started telling me why she came to that church initially and why she, what sort of sparked her to stay. And there was a choir member, and. And he just was one of the most, he's from uh, Ecuador originally, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, just one of the most expressive singers ever. And, and, and he, he really ministered to her heart and pulled her in just with his worship and his expressive nature. And, uh, but I got tickled as a choir director listening to this because I said, 
David's tone deaf. I said he couldn't sing <laughs> if you put a gun to his head. Yeah, I've met those. But his demonstration of worship, you know, just it, like it was his worship that about, just drew me what, in. Well, mm-hmm. And so I used that to teach, you know, maybe you don't have the best voice, but you mm-hmm. can make an impact mm-hmm. uh, yeah. on the platform. That's you know? what Jesus came to do. Absolutely. Yeah. If you just join me, I'm talking to what I call a power couple, <laughs> and that's uh, Jonathan and Christy. Sawyer, and uh, they have been for the last seven years at the wonderful, marvelous First Assembly of God Church in Fort Myers, pastored by the recently retired Dan Betzer, who's in a class all by oh, health science. <laughs> I've known him since I was a teenager <laughs> and love him dearly, so talented. But they're moving to Cleveland, Tennessee, yeah. and actually you're taking the reins of the headquarter church of the entire denomination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I don't want to make you feel. <laughs> no, no, but that's the, it's the mothership of our uh, uh, of our movement, and it you know it, it shares parking lots with Lee University where I went to mm-hmm. school, and so there's a lot of a lot of uh, of network there that that we have. It's almost like going home in a way, but uh, but also we do feel the pressure at the same time. Well, let's. I've never been there, but let's put in a word for Lee University because they have some of the greatest mm. music. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Music of any college anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yes. Music is at Lee what uh, basketball is at Notre Dame. That's what they've <laughs> always said. <laughs> uh-huh. Now, are you musical at all? I can sing um, in a large group, mm-hmm. not a soloist <laughs> at all. I know how to read music, and I've played in a band in school and sang in choir, but I'm that's definitely not my gift. Yeah. Well... I know that a lot of things have changed since I was in the kind of ministries that you do. Um, as for the music, and you think it's a little harder now? Mm. Yeah, well, one of the things that makes it difficult is the, the, the many things we compete with for people's time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what I have noticed. Even just the 15 years I've been in ministry, sports, and and then just the, the pace of life for so many. And then, too, that the fact that, that two in every home just about now work outside mm-hmm. the home, that's a, that has become more and more of a norm. Uh, so we just there's a lot of things to compete for people's time uh, now that we didn't seem to used to. Probably so a much. whole lot different even than uh, when I was doing it. Yeah. Uh, now, Christy, most, boy, most of the women work now yeah. up to yeah. a certain age. Uh, Do you provide anything for that working woman at night? We have a, like our ministry meets on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. And so there's child care that they can drop their kids off. There's also youth group happening at the same time. Um, So it seems to work for our working women to come in the evenings to do that. That's why some people had talked about doing a Saturday morning, but that never works because people are too busy doing things. But it seems to work for us. as you have uh, worked with these gals for a long time, mm-hmm. is there anything that really stands out? Some of the testimonies are really, really powerful or just mm-hmm. turn that life completely around. I think one of my favorite things is there's always women waiting for me after the service to tell me what the Lord has spoken to them or tell me something. And I had a woman come up to me. She was waiting, it was her first time there. And I always ask them, how did you get here? And she said, oh, I was at a food bank and a homeless person invited me. And I said, what? Oh, my goodness. And so this homeless person had been coming to Mm -hmm. my ministry. Someone had invited them and ended up inviting, they're still homeless, inviting this woman to come. And so that's one of, you know, one of the stories, not to mention that they bring these women in from the most unlikely places which I absolutely love uh, to hear about. So, and we, we, we have seen actual physical healings take place, emotional healings take place. And just to see, I think to sum it up, we have women who've been sitting on church pews for 15 years, 20 years, not doing anything. And then all of a sudden now these women have risen up and they are on fire. They are, they are on fire for the Lord and bringing women in. And that to me says it all. I don't know of anything more needed yes. than yeah. that. Yes. I really don't. I, I've been praying uh, for revival. America's yes. in a bad place yes. right now. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I hear these little, oh, yeah. little yeah. sugary testimonies, but I know what the convicting power of the Holy yes. Spirit is, yes. and, and uh, that's what we need. And that's exactly the result you get yes. when you get the word out there and rely on the well, Holy Spirit. We, we've been saying this a lot in the last week or two, but 
our passion is for the lost, but my bigger passion is for the dead. And it's the ones that are <laughs> sitting there because there's only one of me, there's only one of you. Mm -hmm. But if I can, through the power of the Holy Spirit, get someone resurrected up out of that pew and sent out, they go bring the lost in, mm -hmm. bring them back to the river. And that's where I think we are right now. I think it's a great awakening is what it's it is. It's supposed to happen. Exactly. Yeah. And guess what? We're out of time, but I, I, I really appreciate you running in here oh, and talking absolutely. to me. I've been wanting to do it for a long yes. time and hope that any time, any time at all, that you come back through. Yes, Promise? Absolutely. Yes. Hold your we'll yes. here. That's right. Promise. And you will yeah. come to Tennessee in the, in the summer. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know. Uh, stay with me. I'll be back in just a second. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, I want to remind you again, we are viewer-supported, and just can't thank you enough. I appreciate every one of you uh, who give to this program because that's the way we stay on the air. The information is on the screen. A couple ways that you can give. Uh, you choose the one most convenient for you. And we will be so thankful and the Lord will bless you. That's for sure. You know, I was thinking when talking to the Sawyers of the Apostle Paul's writing, and I can't tell you exactly where it was, but he talked about the diversity of ministries. And as I was uh, talking to the Sawyers, I was so thankful for that because there are so many diverse ways to get the gospel out and to help people. That's, that's really the whole idea. And uh, you could hear some of the testimonies like women who just happened to end up in Christie's Bible class and it just changed everything. Or someone who participated in a church music program and the Lord blessed you for it. There are so many ways that you can be involved and grow in the Christian experience. But I believe you don't do it all by yourself. And I'm pretty sure that your church, your community has some kind of a program that you can plug into and be a blessing, but you will be the one most blessed. We're out of time, but please join me next time remembering. You can say it, right? There's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. You should miss a homekeeper's program. You can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.